Hello, and welcome to Principles of Microeconomics. This is Module 4, and we will be discussing production costs. To start off with, when we think about the production choices of firms, all firms are interested in trying to maximize their profits. When we look at the relationship between determining profits, revenue, and costs, we see, as you can see here, that profits are the difference between total revenue and total cost. So, to try to maximize our profits, there are two ways that we can do this. We can try to maximize total revenue, and revenue being calculated as price times quantity, or we can try to minimize our total costs. And our total costs are going to be the sum of our fixed costs and our variable costs. To determine how much a firm is going to produce, it uses a production function. And a production function looks at the total inputs used in production and calculates the amount of output that a firm can expect from the number of inputs that it is using. We can see an example of a production function right here, where we have the quantity of output Q is determined by the amount of capital or machines that the firm is using, plus the amount of labor or workers that it has for production. So the total amount that it can produce is going to be based on the number of machines and the number of workers that it has employed. So let's look at this example. Let's assume that the number of machines stays constant. So this firm is only using one machine for production. But as you can see here, we are varying the amount of workers. We start off with five workers and we increase the number of workers that we have by one worker. So therefore, we're going from five workers all the way down to 10 workers. And we want to see what impact does this, this have on our output. So we plug in our capital and our labor into our production function. As you can see here, we have one machine and five workers, and we keep the capital constant all the way down, but we allow the labor to change based on the number of workers that we have. When we plug in our inputs, capital and labor, into our production function, we get the following output here. So this is the amount that the firm is producing. So now, how can we determine production costs? Well, we have to see how much the firm is paying for its machines and how much it is paying its workers. Let's assume that the rental price of capital is going to be $800. Now, because capital is not changing, regardless of how much we are producing, this is considered a fixed cost. So a fixed cost, the cost does not change depending on how much we produce. So the cost stays constant regardless of the quantity we produce. On the other hand, the wage of the worker is going to be $25 per day. Now, because we are varying the amount of workers that we have, the amount that we pay overall is going to change depending on the amount of labor that the firm is using. This is called a variable cost, and the variable cost changes depending on how much we are producing. So our cost of capital is going to be the number of machines that we are using, or one machine in this case, multiplied by the rental price of capital, which is $800. Our cost of labor is going to be the number of workers multiplied by the $25 that each worker is getting paid. So we have our fixed cost, our capital, and our variable cost coming from the cost of labor. The total cost is going to be the sum of fixed costs plus variable costs. So we add up our fixed and our variable costs to get our total costs. 
Now, when we're also considering the production decisions of firms, we have to think about what is called the marginal product of labor. And the marginal product of labor tells us by how much does input or how much does production increase as we increase our labor. So here what we are looking at is the change in output divided by the change in labor. So we know that our machines stay constant, capital stays constant with one machine, but our labor is increasing. So we want to know by how much is output increasing as our workers increase. So we look at the change in our output divided by our change in labor. So as you can see here, the marginal product of labor starts off at 5.34. So each worker, each additional worker, is producing 5.34 units of the good. Now what you can observe is that as we increase our workers, our output increases, but the contributions per worker start to decline. We see that going from five to six workers, each worker is producing 5.34 units. As we move from six to seven workers, each worker is now producing 4.91 units. Now, if we go from nine to 10 workers, each of the 10th worker is producing only 4.06 units. So what we see here is that output is increasing, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate. So the increase in output is getting slower and slower. This is what we call diminishing marginal returns. So what we observe is that as labor increases, let's say from five workers to 10 workers, our output is increasing, but at a slower and slower rate. So if we increase only one factor of production, only labor, yes, we can expect output to rise, but it is rising at a slower and slower rate. At the same time, because we have more workers and our variable costs are rising, we see that the total cost is going to rise because the variable cost continues to rise as we produce more. Now let's continue on with our discussion of the production costs. So we have our labor, we have our output, and we have our fixed costs at $800 per machine. And we have our variable costs at $25 per worker. The sum of these is our total cost, as we've already seen. Now, if you recall back to one of the first modules that we talked about, we were discussing a concept called marginal analysis. And marginal analysis tells us that the firms make decisions based on the change in the costs and the change in the benefits of their decisions. And we were saying specifically that according to marginal analysis, the optimal way to make those comparisons is on a per unit basis. So therefore, when we are analyzing the production costs of firms and the decisions that we make, we need to analyze the costs on a per unit basis. So here we have average fixed costs, which is our fixed cost divided by the quantity produced, average variable cost, which is variable cost divided by quantity produced, average total cost, which is total cost divided by quantity produced, and what we call the marginal cost, which is the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. Okay, so let's do these calculations. So as you can see here, our fixed cost is going to be the change in fixed cost over the change in output. Our variable cost, average variable cost, is the change or is the variable cost divided by our output. Our average total cost is going to be our total cost divided by our output. And our marginal cost is going to be the change in our total cost divided by the change in our output. So if we graph these 
per unit costs, we can have the following cost curves. Here we have the average fixed cost, which remem remember is the fixed cost divided by quantity. Now what you can observe is that the fixed cost is falling as quantity rises. Because remember, if we look at the cost per unit of each of those machines that we have, the one machine, that $800 per each unit that we produce becomes smaller and smaller as we produce more units. On the other hand, our average variable cost, or the variable cost per unit that we produce, is going to be rising as quantity rises. Okay? So we see that our average variable cost is going to continue to rise as we produce more because we're hiring more and more workers to produce the additional output. Now our average total cost is going to be the combination of our average fixed cost plus our average variable cost. And you can see here that the average total cost here is going to be a U-shaped line. It is going to be falling and then it will start to rise because it is the combination of the average fixed cost and the average variable cost. At low quantities, we have a high average fixed cost but a low average variable cost. At high quantities, we have a low average fixed cost but a high average variable cost. Now, when we look at the relationship between the marginal cost curve and the average total cost curve, we see that marginal cost is going to cross the average total cost curve right at the minimum of the average total cost curve. This is called the efficiency scale. When marginal cost is below average total cost, our average total cost is falling. When marginal cost is above average total cost, we can see here our average total cost is rising. Now lastly, we want to talk about the relationship between our average total cost curves in the long run versus the short run. In the short run, firms are stuck producing as much as they possibly can at the given point in time. They cannot necessarily build new factories within the course of the next week or 30 days. They can't necessarily expand to new locations in the immediate future. So they are stuck producing at the level that they are producing at. In the long run though, small firms can turn into large firms and large firms can downscale into small firms. So therefore, when we look at the long run average total cost curve, or the average total cost curve for firms on the long run, it is going to be the point of the lowest point on the average total cost in the short run. When we see that the average total cost in the long run is falling with the increase in output, this is what we call economies of scale. On the other hand, if the average total cost curve is rising with the increase in output, this is what we call diseconomies of scale, so that the cost per unit is getting higher as we produce more. Thank you so much for joining me in Module 4 on Production Costs.